There was one uh, oral presentation for testicular cancer presented at, uh, at ASCO this year. Uh, it was an interesting study. Um, so the question was, uh, it was a trial uh, presented by Darren Feldman from Stone Kettering. Um, and the question was, should we be giving TIP or BEP in intermediate or poor risk uh, 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 testicular cancer? Why do we need to ask this question? We need to ask this question because um, even though we cure the vast majority of patients with testicular cancer, patients that are poor risk or intermediate risk, there's still a good number of patients who are not cured with first-line chemotherapy standard of giving, giving uh, BEP. So 50% of poor risk or 75% of intermediate risk are cured, but it still leaves 50% of pure risk and 25% with intermediate risk who recur after their first-line chemotherapy. And then ultimately go on to get second-line chemotherapy or high-dose chemotherapy with, with a transplant. Um, but the question is, should we be hitting these patients harder up front um, and giving them a more aggressive therapy? So that's why they did this trial. They randomized these patients to four cycles of TIP or four cycles of BEP, and then they assess them afterwards. A negative trial, unfortunately. Unfortunately, uh, we don't see any benefit to, to giving TIP in this, in this setting. Um, so uh, the standard of care for these patients remains four cycles of BEP. Perhaps you could argue um, you'd give TIP for, for heavy smokers or patients with existing lung disease to avoid them receiving the bleomycin. Um, but, you know, I think it's always important not when there's a negative trial, not just to say, oh, it's a negative trial and say there's nothing to learn from this. That's the end of it. Actually, you know, Darren Feldman wanted to show that there is some interesting things to learn. So what do we learn here about P53? And this is building off some data that he's previously published. And what they did is that he then did a subsequent analysis of combining all those patients together of the TIP and the BEP and then analyzing them for, for, for P53 and looking at the survival. And you're seeing there a very, very different, different level of survival for the P53 mutated patients compared to the P53 wild type. P53 wild type um, having much, much better survival than P53. P53 of showing itself to be a very, very poor prognostic marker. Um, does this help us at this stage to treat it, uh, patients in any different way? Not at this stage. This is just giving us a, under, some understanding of it. Um, we don't have any drugs to target p53 um, th this this isn't uh, this this isn't changing our practice at all but i think making making us clearly aware that just like we're learning in other cancers where in lung cancer you've got egfr and alk and uh, and all different uh, all different mutations and it's making it into a, a multitude of different diseases not just one disease well the same is clearly true true for germ cell cancers as well and showing that there's this group of P53 mutated patients are obviously a, a, a challenging group of patients with really challenging uh, potential outcomes. Thank you.